Hey, this is FGMX and welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can easily create an iPhone in Cinema 4D. So this mock-up is not going to be too detailed but it's going to be very quick and easy to do. So let's get started. So first thing you want to do is create a new cube and this cube is going to be 828 by 1792 with a thickness of 880. Uh, Sorry. So what you want to do is take this cube and make it an editable object. So this is going to allow us to manipulate the points. So to do that, you press just C on the keyboard and it's going to become this icon. Now, next thing you want to do is go to your live selection tool and select the edge selection mode and press U and B on the keyboard to activate ring selection, which allows us to select all the edges in one click. And then you press M and S to activate the bevel tool. Now we just click and drag it just a little bit to get it started and we're going to adjust it more precisely over here. So for the offset, we're going to make it 80 and for the subdivision, we're going to make it 250. Now this, this one is going to be our screen. So we're going to have to create a notch. So to do that, we're going to be using the spline tool, which is basically the pen tool in Cinema 4D. So to do that, we're going to click this button over here and then it's going to show us all our views and we're going to click front and we're going to go in here and if you zoom out you can see that uh, here's our phone screen from the front so we're going to click on the spline tool and zoom in and we're going to use these grid lines to help us draw it so let's start at this point and we're going to go down here and click and drag to make a curve and we're going to go three points we're going to click and we're going to go over here and click and drag to make another point. And here's a quick trick, uh, quick uh, tip in Cinema 4D. If you want to uh, change the direction of the second handle, which is basically the one that I'm pulling right now, all you have to do is click and hold shift and it allows you to adjust uh, the handle. So now we can complete this spline by clicking over here. Now, now that we've uh, finished it, well, let's go back to our normal view. And as you can see, this is just a 2D object and we have to make this a 3D object. And to do that, we're gonna click and hold over here and click on extrude. And we're gonna drag our spline into the extrude object. And boom, it has a thickness. Now, we're gonna make this a thickness of 120. And the thickness actually doesn't matter as long as it's thicker than our screen uh, cube over here because basically what we're going to do here is we are going to use this uh, figure to cut out the top over here to make a notch now uh, the thing you might notice is that over here our axis is over here while our object is over here and it's going to kind of mess things up when we're trying to scale it and move it at all so to fix that we're gonna go over here and click enable axis and we can click and hold and drag this over here and we can make this approximately in the center it doesn't have to be too precise but uh, yeah so once we've done that we can just disable this and drag this over here and we basically it has to uh, its width has to cut through the width of this and and the height uh, basically has to cut through the top and through here if you understand what I'm saying I'm sorry if uh, it's a little hard to, hard to understand but if you see what I'm doing you'll understand it better so we're gonna make this like a notch shape obviously and um, I guess that looks fine and um, now we're just gonna make sure the thickness is right over here and of course we can go in and adjust it right now if we needed to and uh, yeah now we're done with the shape of the notch so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it out and for that we're gonna use a bool so first you're gonna drag in our screen and then after that we're gonna drag in the extrude underneath it and boom it's cut it out and you just have to remember that you can go in and fix it afterwards because it's still an editable object now uh, there we go. And now we have our screen done and now we can rename this bool our screen and for now I'm just gonna drag it to the left so we can create our body and for that we're gonna 
make another cube. And this is going to also be 828 by 1792 with a thickness of 80. And for this one, we're also going to round it. We're using the same steps for this one. So let's press C on our keyboard. And we're going to go to our live selection. And we're going to go to our edge selection. And then U and B to activate ring selection. A lot of selections, I know. So we're going to get all of our edges over here and then M plus S to activate the bevel and we can go over here and type in 120 this time not 80 120 and leave the subdivision the same now we can switch back to our model selection and our move tool and now that we have our body done what we can do is we can move our screen back in front of it so the way this is going to work is we're going to place our screen ever so slightly in front of our body cube. So putting this screen right in front of the body cube ever so slightly by like 0.5 centimeters, it's going to allow us to see the screen, but it's not going to protrude as much and it's going to be very invisible protrusion. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the screen cube and go to the coordinates and make it uh, make the Z 0 point, negative 0 0.05. And it's going to put it ever so slightly in the front. But the thing is, it doesn't have any side bezel, so it looks like it's a full screen phone, and a no phone is a full screen phone. So for that, we're just going to adjust our um, height and width over here. So for this X, we're going to make it 0 0.92, and for the Y, we're going to make it 0 0.96. And if we look over here with our orange lines, it looks pretty good. And if we pre-render uh, pre it, it's not going to uh, look like anything because it's so small of a protrusion, it's unno unnoticeable even at this close distance. So what we have to do is uh, add some texture to it. And for that, we're first going to create our body, uh, body texture. So we're going to make this a gold phone. And for that, I have some RGB codes over here. So for the color, we're going to make it um, 176 by 116 by 79 with a brightness of 150. And for the reflectance, we're going to remove our default specular and add a Beckman. And this Beckman is going to be 35. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to apply to the sides and the back because we're going to use a different material for the front. So let's select our uh, cube. Actually, I'll rename this the body cube. And what we're going to do is go to our live selection and this, which is the polygons selection mode. And if we zoom in, all we have to do is literally hold shift and drag through the areas that we want to select. And as you can notice over here, it didn't select all of it. So we just have to rotate our view and uh, select it. Whoops, sorry. We're just going to have to rotate it and select it like this. And we're just going to do that for all the corners. And remember to double check it. And if you ever need to deselect anything, you can just press command and drag through that. But remember, you have to, if you want to select multiple, you're going to have to hold shift because many people just forget to do that and just drag it. So we're going to click and drag until we've got everything over here. And uh, yeah, and don't forget to select the back as well. And we're just going to uh, set a selection really quickly. And it's going to pop this uh, like triangle over here. And we're going to take this material and drag it to our body. And as you can see, it's covering everything, including the front. And we want it only co uh, to cover the places we selected. So all we're going to have to do is, you see the selection box over here, we're going to take this triangle and drag it to the box. And boom, it's only applied to the front and the back. And as you can see, there's like, uh, it looks like the notch is coming back here, but it's not going to be visible. It's just um, glitch in the rendering. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the front material. And this front material, all it's going to be is a uh, reflectance, uh, a Beckman reflectance of about 2% uh, 
brightness. And and remember to take the roughness off. I don't think I did that on the previous one, so I'm gonna go back in and change the roughness. But remember to make the roughness zero because it's gonna mess with the reflections otherwise. So we're just gonna take this material and we're gonna put it on. And as you can see, it's applying to everything and we just want it to apply to the front. So all we have to do is drag it before this material, the gold material, and it's gonna apply um, to uh, everything. I mean, it's gonna apply to only the front. And for the screen, I have a texture that I can import and it's basically just a screenshot from my actual phone. But you can just find any screenshot of a phone this size. And the resolution just basically has to be any iPhone that has a notch. And if the screenshot is from any iPhone that has a notch, it's going to be uh, working perfectly. So let's go in here and we're gonna uncheck our color and add a luminance and for the luminance I'm just gonna drag in my phone screen really quickly and there we go we have our phone screen and for the reflectance we're gonna remove our specular add a Beckman and we are going to make the screen 10% brightness and remove the roughness as well and yeah and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and add it to our cube okay just the cube and if we add it to our cube so you can see it's all weird and messed up and to fix that what we have to do is take this UVW, uh, UVW tag over here and delete that then right click then go to material tags and then you see the see this set UVW from projection we're gonna click on this little gear icon and we're gonna make the projection type cubic and say fit to selection and if we press ok it's going to be perfectly normal and again all these weird glitches are coming up but if we pre-render it it's going to look perfectly fine now next thing we have to do is add a reflection and for this we need something called an HDRI map it's basically the environment from which these uh, reflections uh, reflect basically so we're going to add a new material move the color reflectance and add illuminance so for this video i've made a specific hdri map which i've linked down in the description for you guys to download and this is one that i've made that i know uh this uh, model works with so i'm going to just import it in now to be able to use this we're going to have to create a sky object and let me just drag this down here and we're going to take this material and put it on the sky and it looks all weird over here but what we have to do is right click and go to render tags and compositing and we uncheck scene by camera and now the, all the sky is going to do is apply the reflections to here but it's not going to do anything else so now if we uh, pre-render it you see that we have our phone done now, uh, of course, you can change this to any color you like. You can put it in any position you like. And, of course, you can change the contents of the screen. So I know this is not a perfect mock-up, but I think that the benefits that it provides for being able to create it quickly and customizing it so easily, and I think that those benefits are pretty great over the compromises. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for some more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching and see you guys later. Peace.